Okay, now in this section, we are going to continue with the basic commands what we have discussed in the previous sessions. If you remember, we have seen some different kinds of modes in the previous sessions, like the basic setup mode, where we can, uh, where generally you'll see the setup mode if your NVRAM is blank without any configurations. And then we have seen some of the basic mode, like a user mode, where we can do only basic monitoring and some specific show commands we have seen. And then privilege mode, where we can use all the show commands and copy and erase commands. So let's go ahead and verify the next mode that is your global configuration mode. Now, before we go ahead, let me just discuss about the mode which we have seen in previously, the user mode, privilege mode, and, and the setup mode, whatever the modes we have, we cannot make any changes in this specific modes. So if I want to make any changes, I need to get into the next mode and that mode is your global configuration mode like take an example in my network i got some multiple devices that maybe it's a switch or you have some multiple routers in your network now the default name for every device will be either either switch or a router like let me just get back to the command line to see that so i'm going to take one router here a normal 2621 router i'm getting into the command line of that particular router Now the first time you will see the setup mode here and then and then by default you can see the name of the router is by default router my, my requirement is when you have multiple devices in your network you have some routers uh, multiple routers we, we generally preferable to give the names for the router like maybe i'm giving some location name at hyderabad or bangalore or if you have one router in dubai so you need to give some names for the routers based on the locations so so to make that possible, what we can do is we can change the host name. So that is the first change which we are going to do here. So if you want to do these changes, either it can be changing the name or changing the IP address or, or any other things, whatever the changes you want to do, you need to ensure that you go to the next mode. And that is what we call as global configuration mode. And to go to the global configuration mode, we need to type this command called configure terminal. So once I give this command, the router will allow you to go to the next mode called global configuration mode where we can change the host name like i'm giving my NVA as a name uh, it can be any name we can just give host name and whatever the name you want to type so the main intention of giving the host name is it is going to allow the devices to be identified by the network administrator on your network like you got some three switches in your production network probably you want to differentiate these three switches then we can use some name as uh, switch three, floor three, floor two, and floor one, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and verify the configuration on the command line. So I'm going to the command line, and and this command only works in the global configuration mode. So which means when you are when you want to make any changes, you need to ensure that you are inside this global configuration mode. And there are many changes we can do. In that, the first change we are going to start with host name. And I can just change any name like I can give the name of the location. It can be or it can be it can be any name of the company or it can be any name. So generally you can give any name for that. Okay. So let me give this name. Okay. So you can see once I change the name, the next line you can see the command line. Com command line with the new name here. Okay. So let us do some more changes as we go ahead. We'll try to change some of the passwords now before i get into this password let's try to understand why we need a password <coughs> now you all know that password is one kind of security which you can apply on any devices if i want to restrict any users uh, accessing my routers i need to ensure that i configure some passwords and by default we don't have any passwords like if you if you verify getting back to the command line uh, you can see when i try to log into my router it's not asking any passwords. So there's no password anywhere because by default, the routers will not be prompted for the passwords. Now, what I want is I want to secure this device so that if anyone is trying to access the command line of this router, I want to ensure that the router should prompt for the password. Now, okay, so to assign the passwords, first thing we need to know 
what are the different lines or what are the different doors from where we can access the devices. Now majorly we have three different lines or we can say three different doors from where we can enter into the command line of the router. Now when one method is via console. Now what I can do is I can connect a console cable to the router and I can access via a console line to get into the command line. If you remember we discussed this console connection how it looks. We got some cable on the back, the blue cable. Let me just get back to show you the console line here. This is what a console connection. So we can have a console connection connecting to the COM port. And if you enter, want to enter the command line, we open one hyper terminal application. And what I want is I want my router. If anyone is trying to do this, I want my router to stop me at the console port and ask for a password. Now, if the password is given correct, then only the router should be able to see the command line. So it means the user should be able to see the command line of the router. So I want to secure that console line. So we can do that by assigning the passwords. So there's one more way to access the device. If you remember, we discussed uh, via auxiliary. I can connect my router to an auxiliary port and then to modem and then to telecom line. I can access the device remotely via auxiliary port. And I want to ensure that if anyone is trying to enter the router through auxiliary, I want to secure this port. That is one more, one more method we can do. And there's one more way of accessing the devices is via telnet or on the routers we call that as VTY line. Now what is exactly that? So let's take an example. Let me take one diagram here. I got a LAN here, a small LAN and I got one more LAN on a different location. Let's say this is my Hyderabad location here and I got one more branch office in Dubai. Now my, requ my requirement here is I'm sitting in my LAN here and I have something to configure on the Dubai router. Maybe I want to do some advanced configurations and I want to access this router on a remote location. So I cannot say that I'm going to go to Dubai and come back and configure that. So that's something really not, uh, not really, you, no one wants to do that because uh, you need to monitor the networks or you need to access the devices remotely. So what I can do is by sitting here, I can go to the command line, okay? And I can, I can simply say telnet, there's a command for telnet. And assuming that the IP address of this particular device is 10.002, I just need to give this command. Now, once I give this command by sitting here and it is going to ask me some passwords. So let's assume that I'm going to provide the correct password. Then the router will allow you to connect remotely on the command line of this router via remotely. Now we call this as telnet. Uh, it's more similar to remote desktop connection, what you will do in a Microsoft if you know already. So this is something what telnet allow you to do. And this particular line, whatever we use, we call that as line VTY line instead of uh, through which the telnet access will be provided. Okay, so we call that as VTY line, and VTY is not any specific port, it's actually a virtual uh, telnet connection which is going to allow, allow you to connect remotely. Now, there are a few more things we need to know. Just now, I said that by sitting here in my LAN, I can access the remote device somewhere in a different location in Dubai, I can do that. But there are a few things we need to know before that. If you want to access the device via telnet from here to remote device, the prerequisite is there should be a connectivity. Uh, it can be the LAN and the WAN. And also there must be an IP address on both the sides, which means you, you need to have an IP address on the computer and then for all the devices and then remotely, there should be an IP address on the remote device as well. And then there should be a password configured on the router so that whenever you try to turn it from here to then, it should prompt for the password. And by default, if you don't assign the password, in that case, it will not allow you to get into the command line. Okay, so these are the three prerequisite or the pre-requirements we need to uh, know, we need to have in order to have a telnet access. So telnet is the most common way of accessing the devices in the production networks. But in order to telnet, we need to have this prerequisite and this prerequisite can be configured via console. And once I make the router up and running via console, once I configure, once I do the connectivity, uh, this is something we'll be learning in our next sections. 
so probably in our next sessions we'll be getting into that more in detail and also we'll see more in detail on how to assign the IP address and uh, what are the different rules we need to follow to do that we'll be seeing that also more in detail in the later on sessions but right now at, at this point of time I'm going to show you how to configure the password if anyone is trying to access my remote device via telnet and I want my router to prompt for the password. In that case, we need to secure this video by line. Okay, so uh, more on the telnet, how to do this practically, I'm going to show you once I'm done with this, all these three things in my next sessions. So, but at this point of time, I'm going to show you only how to configure the password right now. So I want to secure all these three lines, all these three lines I want to secure. Let's see how to configure the passwords. So starting with console password. Now, in order to configure the console password, you must be inside the config mode. So any changes you want, you can only do in the configuration mode. And once I'm inside the configuration mode, then the only command which we use is we need to say line. And then you want to, you need to select which line you want to use, whether you want to go to console line, whether you want to go to auxiliary line, whether you want to go to VTY line. So if you see the first line of the command, this is the only one difference you have in all the three lines. I'll come to these two numbers here, zero and four. And if you observe the remaining configurations, whatever the remaining configurations, this part is exactly the same uh, when you compare with all the things. We just define what is the password you want to give and then you can type the password here in this place. And then we need to say login. Login is uh, prompting for the router to ask for the password at the time of login and then exit exit will take you one step back back to the config mode and then the same thing I need to do for line auxiliary and the same thing I need to do for line VTY also so if you just try to observe the VTY line here so I'll come to this VTY line 0 and 4 numbers but before that I just want to verify the console password now to verify the console password, let's get into the command line of the router here. You can see on the left side, you can see the command. I'll go to my config mode. Configure space terminal is the command which will allow you to get into the configuration mode. And then I can use line question mark. We'll show you a lot of, lot of options here. So we use console and auxiliary lines here. And then by default, there's only one console port. So password is Cisco123 I'm using. And when you're typing the password, ensure that you're not giving a space and pressing enter. So if you do that, it's going to count this particular space as a non-displayable character. So the password has to be Cisco123 space again. So I'm not giving a space here, Cisco123. You can see the cursor is exact behind this three and then press enter and then login. So the configuring the password is very easy, exactly the same way as we discussed. Now let's verify whether the router is prompting for the password or not. So to do that, just exit multiple times. Now I'm outside the router. Right now I'm using my router via console. So you can see before I get into the first mode, it is asking me the password. So if I type the correct password, then only I will be able to log in. So I'm not typing the correct password here. You can see it's not allowing me to log in. So let's type the correct password Cisco123. Now once I type the correct password, then it will allow you to log in. But you can see there is no asterisks, no dots, nothing. So when you type the password, it will not show you any characters or anything. It just, uh, uh, it will not show you anything, that's it. But you have to type the passwords. So you can see I have given the correct password. Now the router has allowed me to get into the command line. Let's get into the next thing. Let's try to configure the auxiliary password also. Anyway, we are not going to test the auxiliary connection here, but let's configure the password something, CCNA123, and then login. And there's one more way, line VTY. Now, when I use question mark here, you can see the VTY line, it shows 0 to 15. Now, VTY is actually, uh, it's a virtual line, which will allow you to allow your telnet and, and there's something called SSH also, which is more similar to Telnet, uh, more in encrypted way. Uh, it will allow this kind of connections over there. Now, when I say VTY line, zero to four, which means 
when I say line VTY 0 space 4, it means that I am allowing 5 simultaneous telnet sessions are possible. So which means I can have 0, if, if the first user tries to telnet, he will use uh, line 0 and then line 1 and then line 2 and then line 3 and line 4 which means I am going to assign a password which is a common password will be for all these 5 lines. So which means in the production networks normally there are multiple network engineers who might be working on the same network and they might be accessing the same device at the same time okay but again every user will have a different kinds of privileges based on that uh, they, they may change something so that it all depends upon the privileges again but this will allow you to have a simultaneous telnet sessions at the same time and one more thing the telnet is not your port we didn't discuss it's not a physical port it's actually a service more similar to your HTTP which works on port number 80 more similar to your uh, FTP protocol which will allow you to send and receive the files HTTP will allow you to send and receive some web pages and similar way telnet is a service which will allow you to access the remote devices okay so when I'm giving line VTY 0 space 4, which means I want to use five lines simultaneously and I'm assigning the password for all those five lines. And if I use the line VTY 0 space 0, in that case, I'm allowing only one simultaneous session uh, for telnet and the remaining sessions will be by default closed. So we, generally we do give default as 0 to 4 and then I'm going to give the password Cisco123 or anything ccnp123 and then login okay now to verify all these configurations okay so to verify all these configurations what we can do is we can always use the show running configuration command so when i give show running config it is going to show you all your configurations like the changes what we did and then if you just come down a little bit you will see what are the passwords you have configured just now in this password we have only verified the console password okay 